Ahoy music lovers, vinyl enthusiasts, and everyone in between. My name is Isaac, this is The Blind Island, and today I am going to be doing a video on how to get your vinyl collection started. Now, I know that there are a lot of videos out there floating around like this, and I know that most of my audience that watches this channel are pretty uh, set collectors. They already know what they like. They already know how to get started. But I'm trying to reach out to some people that may not watch the channel and also just uh, give a little bit of tidbits of wisdom that I've picked up over the time. You're going to be hearing some things that you've probably heard from other people and maybe some things that are contrary to what you've heard. But uh, you know what? The beautiful thing about collecting records is it's everyone's own individual journey. And when you get started, you're going to have your own story. And that's the beautiful thing about music in general, is that everyone has their own taste, everyone has their own opinion, and uh, here's just me kind of shouting out, seeing if anybody uh, would like to hear it, and see if it might be helpful to anyone. So, let's get started. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to go with is you know, a lot of complaints, usually when a person is trying to get started with record buying, is a, how do I afford a record player? Uh, there are so many different options, uh, it's very confusing. And you know what? I know that there's a lot of fierce debate in the music community, audiophile community, about the proper record player. But I'm just going to say, go with whatever you can afford at this moment. And if that means that it's a little Crosley turntable, then pick that one up but also go into it with the caveat of knowing that so you know this is only a placeholder if you it's kind of like testing the waters do I really want to invest my time into this hobby and that's a good place of just getting started and saying ah, oh, you know maybe this is something I get into later on down the line I would suggest if you get a Crosley turntable only stick with it for about six months because after that Everything that you're buying, especially if it's going to be rather expensive or you're getting a deluxe edition or of a new artist, you're going to be damaging your records. And also, they may not play properly. But if that's what you can afford and if that's how you get into the you know, game, go for it. And Crosley is actually coming out with some better turntables too. More uh, in-depth... Uh, things. There is a version that's come out. I can't remember the style right now, but it's an actual turntable with a with a balance. Uh, and I think that it might be more up people's alley. It usually runs around $180. It's a pretty affordable package. I'll include a link to it in the in description below so that you can get a taste of it. And then I suggest after you started to collect some more vinyl, purchase a better turntable. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a new one. It can be a vintage turntable. There are lots of good stuff. Uh, go and ask your local record store what's a great turntable. They're going to be a wealth of knowledge, uh, not just for turntables, but for music in general. So now that we've covered that portion, let's get on to how do I get my record collection started? And most people, you know, it's going to be pretty expensive. It's an expensive hobby. So what I'm going to suggest is start by collecting things that you like. So if, there, if you enjoy Ariana Grande, then go and buy an Ariana Grande record and listen to that record front to back and keep on buying uh, whatever artists that you enjoy. If you enjoy Led Zeppelin, go and get some Led Zeppelin. And you can find some decent used copies that aren't going to be extremely expensive. For me, what I got started off with is an artist that I loved and continue to love to this day is uh, Bob Dylan's Bringing It All Back Home. And Bob Dylan, I just kept on collecting more and more of him, and I kept on building on artists that I love, Van Morrison, Leonard Cohen, Tom Waits, Beach Boys, 
and I just kept on collecting. And then after I kind of built my regular collection, I was able to start saying, well, I have everything that I want of my base artists. Let's start getting a little bit more crazy and experimental. So I would suggest going with stuff that you know, you love, and if it's going to be new, make sure it's an artist that you completely love. Don't go and be experimental on a record that's going to cost you $25. But with that being said, after you've kind of built up your collection, maybe you have 25, 50 records of artists that you really enjoy, albums you really love, and you're like, well, I've kind of gotten what I like, now I want to start experimenting a little bit more. Uh, I suggest going out there and trying something new. Try something new with a different type of record cover. Try something new that is outside of your wheelhouse. Always look in a section where the, it might be $10 and below. See if there's something that really strikes you as far as the artwork is concerned. Go and ask a record store clerk. Hey, I like this artist, this artist, this artist. I'm looking for something similar in that vein, but outside of my comfort zone. And they'll be able to point you in a good direction. Uh, an example for me is I usually was able to keep things under $10 and try new artists. A great example of that is this uh, Gabor Jabot Jazz Raga. Now, I had no idea what this was when I picked it up. It was $3.99. I thought the, the artwork was cool. I could tell that it was a jazz record because it was on the Impulse label. Once you get started into your collecting, you'll start to know this labels more often. I'm going to stay away from that right now as this is just beginning. So I would say, you know, I took a chance. It was $3.99. It looked really good. So I went with it, purchased it, brought it home, fell in love with Gabor Jabot, and he continues to be an artist that I collect. Next, when you're going after used vinyl, you want to make sure that you take the record out of its sleeve entirely, hold it up to the light, and check for any scratches, any dings or major marks, or any warping because that's going to affect how it plays on your turntable at home. You won't be getting quiet sound if there are lots of surface scratches. But bear in mind that there are different types of record pressings, so maybe a surface scratch isn't that big of a deal. And also, if it does have some surface scratches, you can get some really great deals on some rare records if you're willing to put up with a little background noise. Some people don't want that at all. Other people can deal with it. I'm one of those individuals that can deal with a low background noise. Always be taking a record out of its sleeve. And this is how I usually inspect it. When I take a record out of its sleeve entirely, I don't do something called pinching. Now you'll see a lot of people, they take their records out and they pinch the sides that usually will leave a little oil and residue on the outer edge. I don't like to do that because it could potentially be pulled into the groove from the needle. So what I do is I reach in and I pull it out by its inner label and keep my thumb by the outer edge so I don't touch any part of the record. Now I'm gonna hold this up to the light and inspect it, make sure that Everything looks good as far as the scratches are concerned. Flip it over, do the same. And then I'm going to hold it like this and basically see if there is any sort of warping and kind of move the record a little bit because sometimes there are little tiny warps on the edges that will cause a big skip. So you want to be looking out for those. So yeah, always be checking the records when you're purchasing them, especially used vinyl. Your new stuff you won't be able to because it's sealed, but anytime it's open, check the vinyl. And then finally, follow recommendations from your friends. They know your taste best, they know you best. And also, be watching some videos on here in YouTube 
to see what other people might be suggesting. Jen over at Spins and Needles talks very frequently about this record, Jonathan Richmond's I, Jonathan. I picked this one up and I love it. It's a masterpiece, it's fantastic. I had listened to this streaming before, but I had never really given it a major listen, a deep dive listen, and this turned out to be fantastic. A great suggestion from a person who knows a lot about music. So I highly suggest that you listen to recommendations from friends, family, and other people on YouTube that have a little bit more knowledge as far as music is concerned. So guys, that, those are a few of my tips for getting started with your record collection. And also the final tip is that this is supposed to be fun. This is not supposed to be about gatekeeping. This is not supposed to be about whose music taste is the best because everyone thinks that their own music taste is the best. So just go find some records, enjoy your time, and really just fall in love with the music that you enjoy all over again on vinyl. So guys, those are my tips and tricks. What do you think? Are there any other things that you're really looking for when you're getting started with your record collection? If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And as always, guys, I hope that you have a great day on your own personal oasis. Cheers.